Hey, what's up? This is John, and today I'm going to be reviewing a new one that just came out from 2023. Today we're going to be looking at Murder Size. Murder Size is an independent horror comedy written and directed by Angelica de Alba and Paul Ragsdale, who have their own little production company called a and Productions, and this is the latest feature coming from them. This movie's got a very low budget, which it absolutely makes the best use of. For not working with a ton of money and having minimal locations, I think it does a really great job of keeping us entertained. It's got tons of candy colored sets, lighting and costumes, uh, starring a group of beautiful and hilarious young women, and of course it's got some fun and gory kills. The story of Murder Size follows the production of a cheap and sleazy workout video starring a group of ladies dressed in skimpy neon outfits. We quickly follow Phoebe, an all-American girl who's not exactly down with the level of sleaze that's going into the making of this video, even though it doesn't seem to bother any of the other ladies in the production. At a certain point early on, Phoebe gets put temporarily in charge of the set and kind of wrangling everybody and keeping order. And it's at this point that her arc of ambition and empowerment kind of starts where she's suddenly determined that she wants to be the cover girl of, of this production. And of course, you got to have murder in your murder size. So meanwhile, we've got a couple of these big scary dudes who are posing as police, who are on the prowl for any vulnerable young lady. From there, the movie takes these two narratives and drives them to collision between making art and these scary dudes dishing out bloody death. So one of the very first things that I enjoy about this movie, possibly even more than all the beautiful people or the humorous dialogue or some of the cool practical effects that we'll talk about in a minute, is just how fun the color palette is in this movie. I think first off you see right from the start that the costumes are a lot of fun and I even saw online that there's people who are already selling, I think to the surprise of the filmmakers themselves, they're selling like character murder size Halloween costumes and it makes sense because they're they're pretty iconic looking and they definitely catch your eye first thing. There's also a scene in an apartment early on in the film where everything in there is candy colored and the whole thing is lit with blue gels and it, it just looks really awesome. And even in other scenes where there's not necessarily a lot of color around, um, they'll do things like utilizing a lens flare that makes for a really rainbowy pattern on screen. So the whole like color explosion is kind of constantly happening in the movie and I find that really pleasing to look at. Next up, of course, you've got all the beautiful people in this movie. Everybody in this movie is absolutely gorgeous and they're all pretty damn funny too. Um, the actress Jessa Flux, who plays Candy, does a really great job of digging into just how campy this thing can be. And she uses a valley girl accent to kind of sound stupid and silly and it's most effective in this one scene where her prowess at seduction is proving to be completely ineffective, which is not at all what she's used to and just ends up driving her up the wall. Drew Marvick is great as a production assistant who gets a lot of the funniest lines in the movie where he kind of comes in playing a mixture of goofy and suave to sort of impress the ladies, but at the same time, he ends up being completely flustered by them. And there's also some scenes when he's dealing with the dudes on set where he does a good balance of being a little bit bossy mixed with some, a little, yeah, whatever, and playing it cool that ends up uh, being pretty charming. I think everybody in this movie does a good job of 
giving their characters each enough definition that as you're remembering the film, everyone's pretty clear. They're not, they're not totally interchangeable. In a lot of movies like this, it would just be, you know, victim number one and victim number two. But that said, the absolute star of the show is the lead actress, Kansas Bowling, who plays Phoebe. She ends up showing a, a good deal of range and she's given a lot of opportunity to show that range. But anytime that she needs to play stuck up, naive, overstimulated, fun, crazy, she is game and up to the challenge and really delivers in every single frame of this movie that she's in. I also think that the bloody practical effects, which are the things that horror fans really want to see, are pretty good in this movie. I think earlier on they're a little bit smaller and one or two of them are a little silly, or maybe actually even they're all silly, but they really save the goods for one that comes at the finale of the movie. And it's in a moment where the the makeup and the editing and the lighting and the sound and the music, like every everything comes together for this one super memorable effect that might be the most memorable visual in the entire movie. And, you know, we'll see remembering this down the road if we're like, oh yeah, that's the one where this such and such crazy thing happened. But it looks amazing and it's definitely one of those moments in the film where you just kind of say, that is money well spent. So going into this movie, you know, I kind of kept my expectations in check. You know, a lot of low budget movies can sometimes have this vibe of, you know, me and my friends made this movie, which can be fun on the one hand, but a lot of times doesn't necessarily make for a breezy and engaging viewing experience. Um, I will say that is not the case here. So I was completely engaged in this movie from start to finish. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they've really got the script beats down and they know how long to make each scene and they're really good at knowing, you know, incrementally in a movie like this, how and when to deliver the exploitation goods, whether that is showing a little skin, having a little bit of murder, throwing in some conflict, keeping things colorful. It really just keeps entertaining you throughout. I also think that on lower budget productions, sometimes technical issues can plague them. I thought that the sound was mixed really nicely. I ended up watching this on headphones, so pretty much got that full experience. Um, I thought the music was mixed in nicely. I thought the levels all hit right. I didn't notice any problems with it, which I would say is the, is the thumbs up for doing a good job there. I also thought that all the music used in the movie fit really well. There are some great synthesizer tracks that are in the intro of the movie and around the workout parts of the film. And there's also a couple of really rockin' tracks from the band Total Wolf that are written exclusively for the movie, including its very own murder size theme song, which I picked up a copy of on iTunes and I think is totally awesome. All in all, it seems like Angie and Paul and the whole cast and crew of this thing are just on their way to bigger and bigger things every time they come out, um, which is really exciting. I wouldn't be surprised if not too far down the road, uh, somebody throws the big bucks at one of their next projects. And I think that they're self-proclaimed ability to stretch a dollar um, would be really exciting to see given a slightly bigger budget. I'm really excited to see what's next. I would totally suggest giving Murder Size a rent, which you can do for three bucks on newvillagevideo.com. I will leave a link to that below. Um, there's still currently a Murder Size Indiegogo page up where you can still purchase character posters that they made for the film, as well as a Blu-ray that they have coming out in sometime in the next couple of months. I know that I'm somebody who's been guilty of giving a lot of love to stuff that came out in the 80s and 90s, which is of course great, like supporting companies that are doing restorations and all that is a really good thing. And I certainly don't want that to go away, but I also think it's really important to support people who are 
out there right now making really cool art like this movie. So again, just jump on over to New Village Video, throw your three bucks at this thing, and I think you're gonna have a good time. That is it for this review. Thanks again for watching. Once again, I'm gonna have links down below to all the murder size related stuff you can think of. Also, as always, I'll have all of my social media links down below in case you wanna follow me on other platforms. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel and share it. Uh, and let's help keep the momentum that Murder Size has keep going. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.